Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. Following yesterday's horrific school shooting in Nashville, schools across this state have been looking at ways to improve safety, as well as helping kids deal with their feelings surrounding school shootings. Our Matthew Jaroncic has the story. That was an unsafe situation, and now I'm scared. Now I am afraid to go to school. McElveen describes the emotions typically running through a kid's head following a school shooting. It's really tricky. It's challenging to to have a one size fits all. You can't really have a one size fits all way of talking to to kids. Despite an increase in school shootings nationwide, Maine schools have been working with local law enforcement along with using state of the art technology to provide a better plan in case any Maine school sees this kind of emergency. If we have a shooter or a gunman, uh, we click that thing 10 times. It goes to the Bangor Police Department, the Bangor Fire Department, other law enforcement, and we'll have people responding to our schools. The whole cavalry will come. In Brewer, Public Safety Officer Jason Moffat says his team takes every precaution to help keep children safe at school. From having a school resource officer on hand at every school to continuously participating in active shooter drills takes training in an open dialogue with students to make sure everyone is prepared. It's not like, uh, you know, you, you send someone active shooter training and call it good, they're done. You know, the, it, it really never ends. And uh, even with security protocols, they're under constant, or they should always be under constant review. Something that periodically we look at those, see if there's anything we can tighten up and improve upon. It's, it's obviously one of our top priorities, keeping our children safe. Bangor Superintendent of Schools James Taker says no matter the price tag, keeping students safe is always his first priority. There's no price out of life, so I think that um, whatever we can do to make parents, students, faculty and staff more comfortable, we're going to do that. It should, be a, it should be a given that you can come to school every day and go home from school every day. Matthew Jaroncic reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, the Maine Public Utilities Commission held a public hearing in Bangor tonight in regards to Versant Power's latest rate hike request. In October, Versant filed to request a 32% increase in its distribution rate. This after a more than 40% increase in the company's supply rate went into effect in January. If approved, bills for average residential customers would rise about $13 per month or about $156 annually starting this summer. Tonight, concerned ratepayers spoke in opposition to the proposed increase, questioning what that money would actually be used for. I'm on a fixed income, retired uh, Vietnam vet and then retired Air Force on top of that. I, I just don't get it. I, I don't understand why the PUC gave them the rate increase before. And I sure as heck don't understand why they would do it now. Well, Verson Power argues the rate hike is necessary in order to pay for infrastructure investments, including smart meter upgrades, rising energy costs and inflation, as well as system reliability improvements. Another public hearing will be held tomorrow at Northern Maine Community College in Presque Isle. Maine State Police have released the names of those killed after a vehicle crashed into a Madawaska home over the weekend. According to State Police spokesperson Shannon Moss, a Ford Econoline van crashed into a home at 149 Bellevue Street around 8.30 p.m. on Saturday. Both the driver in the van, of the van and a resident inside the home were killed in the crash. The driver has been identified by the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner as 44-year-old Sean Cody of Madawaska. The deceased resident has been identified as 71-year-old David Morin of Madawaska. That crash is still under investigation and more information is expected to be released at a later date. The Waldo County Sheriff's Office and Belfast Police are investigating how an inmate escaped from custody over the weekend. 39-year-old Robert Porter was arrested last Thursday for a probation violation. He was detained at the Waldo County Correctional Center. On Saturday, correctional personnel transported Porter to the Waldo County General Hospital for treatment of an ongoing medical issue. Waldo County Sheriff's Lieutenant Cody Late says Porter broke out of custody while at the hospital and ran away on foot shortly before 9 p.m. that night. Someone contacted the sheriff's office to report Porter was at a residence off Swan Lake Avenue in Belfast. Authorities located him there while executing a search warrant and returned him to custody without incident. Now, following that search, officers arrested 37-year-old Daniel Terrian, 56-year-old Everett Hall, and 42-year-old Rosemary Breen, all of Belfast, 
Each of them has been charged with aiding escape, according to Lieutenant Late. Tarion was also charged with unlawful trafficking of scheduled drugs and violation of conditions of release. Budget negotiations in the legislature have stalled as Republicans and Democrats find themselves at odds over how and when to implement certain tax relief measures. At their weekly press conference, Republicans said Democrats are refusing to consider their proposal to implement a $200 million structural tax relief proposal that they say would largely benefit low- and middle-income Mainers. Republicans want to see that measure added to Part 1 of the budget, which is slated for consideration and passage first. Republican co-chair of the Appropriations and Financial Affairs Committee, Senator Rick Bennett, says the Democrats have rejected the measure outright. Democratic Representative Melanie, Melanie Sachs, who co-chairs the Appropriations Committee, countered that by saying that they're trying to pass already promised tax relief measures and funding for basic services first and would consider the new proposal for the budget's Part 2. I thought that the, uh, there was a sincere interest on the part of the other party to listen to a modest um, tax relief proposal, but uh, given its reception, it, it clearly was not. Um, we weren't even saying right now, to, in order to get our vote, we need all the details worked out. Uh, we, we felt that, that that could wait for goodwill negotiations, and unhappily there, are, there is no goodwill negotiation on this. I think it's interesting that they walked away from approving oh, $262 million worth of tax relief currently. We need to get that passed because we made that promise. And what we have talked about repeatedly is we are very open to talking about tax relief of many forms. There are an enormous number of bills in the tax committee, and we look forward to seeing those public hearings and that pro public process happen in order to talk about them in a part two. Democrats say they're pushing to get part one of the budget done first so that it can be in place before July 1st. Failure to meet that deadline would trigger a government shutdown. Well, as the U.S. Senate Committee on Appropriations hears testimony on how to allocate money for projects, Senator Susan Collins, who is the ranking member of the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee, questioned top Navy and Marine leaders about the importance of having a strong naval surface fleet. Admiral, let me return to you. Could you explain to the committee why our surface Navy is so important as a deterrent from a deterrence perspective. So the, uh, the destroyers, the cruisers that we have at sea today are really the backbone uh, of the fleet, along with our aircraft carriers uh, and our amphibious ships. Um, you just can't replace forward presence. It's there uh, to not only ensure that U.S. interests are looked after, but that we're also poised in case any crisis comes up well, under the administration's proposal, the size of the Navy would actually shrink to 291 ships over the next five years. By contrast, China's fleet is projected to grow to 440 ships by 2030. Democratic Representative Holly Stover of Booth Bay recently proposed three bills to the Health and Human Services Committee to improve Maine's response to sexual violence. One would allow state-sponsored sexual assault support centers to hire up to seven behavioral health professionals to provide services and receive training to work with victims of sexual assault, sexual exploitation, sexual violence, and related trauma. Another would create a program to support child advocacy centers and community-based services to respond to suspected child abuse or exploitation. She also co-sponsored a bill with Senator Jill Dusun of Portland to increase state funding to sexual assault services by more than $3 million over the next two years. At the end of the day, what we really do want is anybody who's harmed a child to be held accountable. What we want is that justice for those child victims and those child survivors. Health and Human Services Committee will be holding a work session on those bills in the coming weeks. All righty, well, let's uh, hit pause here and take a look outside. We've been enjoying some really nice temperatures, some nice sunny days, yeah. a lot of melting, which has been great. Yeah, the last two days have just been fantastic. Great way to start the week. But we do have a couple potentially dicey days on the way. Yes, we do. In the meantime, let's just get a quick first look of our forecast.
All right, Beth, thank you, Zalki Tree Service, for been providing top-notch arbor services to the greater Bangor region. Our reputation for quality and committed customer satisfaction speaks for itself. See for yourself and give us a call today, and let's talk about temperatures. So this is about what the atmosphere is supposed to do this time of the year, with highs in the mid to upper 40s across our area. It will be slightly warmer tomorrow with some sunshine back in the forecast. Today, though, lots of clouds out there, and this looks like a lot worse than it really is. There's lots of verga in here, precipitation up there but not reaching the ground. This will all fade away tonight and tomorrow. We are in for a very nice day until we get to then Thursday. There's a lot going on here. That will bring us our next round of precipitation getting in here on Thursday. Our forecast then tonight, though, is partly cloudy skies, a couple of sprinkles out there with lows in the 30s. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth? All right, thanks, Jeff. We will be waiting for it for sure. Indeed. All right, well, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, the annual Maine Governor's Conference on Tourism was in Bangor. We'll take you there. And the Bangor School System partnered with the University of Maine to take a scientific approach to analyzing their school system. We'll explain. Stay with us. Looking to buy or sell a home? The more true team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the more true team a call today or visit their Facebook page. We've got your back, Road Warriors, because we know you're picking up the pace. Steering life at 10 and 2, you're hitting the road, and we're helping you get there with confidence. So skip the counter without missing a beat. Choose any car in the aisle and be the boss of you. Go national. Go like a pro. Are you considering buying a new home? A home inspection is a major step in the home buying process. Knowing the current condition of your future home is very important. From simple DIY repairs to major issues that could cost thousands down the road. Not only can TJ inspect your property, but he is also a licensed contractor. Give him a call today at 210-5000 for a free inspection quote. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Nice. Sweet. Go big or go home. What'd you say? What's up? Right now, you could save up to $1,100 with affordable 3.99% financing on most four-wheel drive Tacoma models. And every Tacoma comes with two years no-cost maintenance and more. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. It's an epic new season with weekly themes and a special new twist. What? Somebody's messing with us. The Masked Singer, Wednesday on Fox. Looking to buy or sell a home? The more true team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the more true team a call today or visit their Facebook page. You can join Fox 22 and ABC7 online at foxbangor.com. Be a part of the conversation on Twitter and join our Facebook family at Fox ABC Maine. Follow, like, watch. Download the new Fox Bangor app from the App Store or Google Play and get your news anytime, anywhere. Welcome back. A hospital in Greenville is celebrating a big milestone in its modernization project. The new ambulance and main hospital buildings for Northern Light C.A.D. Hospital are now weather tight. The groundbreaking for the project happened last spring and the final steel beam was put into place last fall. C.A.D. Hospital President Marie Vigneau says with the buildings fully enclosed, the construction crew can now proceed with wiring, walls and other interior work. She says installation of the interior metal framing in the new hospital is well underway and it's also and it's definitely starting to take shape. The modernization project remains on budget and renovations to the east wing are also on schedule. Officials say, though, that due to supply chain issues, the opening of the new hospital, known as the Buck Family Building, has been changed from August of this year to February of next year. Well, if you're planning to visit Acadia National Park this season, it's going to cost a little bit more. The National Park Service has approved an entrance fee increase that will take effect on April 1st. The new price will be $35 for a seven-day pass for a private vehicle, 
30 bucks for a seven day pass for a motorcycle, $20 for a pedestrian or cyclist seven day pass, and $70 for an Acadia annual pass. The majority of the entrance fee is used to fund the Island Explorer bus system and other projects that directly benefit visitors or protect park resources locally. There are three days that people can visit the park for free. Those days are on April 22nd for the first day of National Park Week, August 4th for Great American Outdoors Day, and September 23rd for National Public Lands Day. And any day is a great day to enjoy Acadia, that is for sure. Well, an annual event in Bangor is highlighting one of Maine's most important industries. Our David Ledford was there. Yeah, it's good news. The annual Maine Governor's Conference on Tourism returned in Bangor, where tourism and hospitality professionals from across Maine came out to discuss the state of the industry. The two-day event featured an awards presentation by Governor Janet Mills to celebrate Maine businesses and the release of new data from the Maine Office of Tourism. Research from the office found that tourists spent nearly $8.6 billion in Maine in 2022, supporting 151,000 jobs. Maine's gross domestic product a key measure of economic growth, has surpassed pre-pandemic projections. Our GDP has grown at the best rate in New England and the ninth fastest rate in the nation. The office also reports that visitor spending in 2022 was up by more than 10 percent, bringing in nearly $5.6 billion to Maine households. Steve Lyons, director for the Maine Office of Tourism, says that the office will continue to push the industry forward to bring in more revenue for Maine business owners. Diversity is something that we're going to be putting a lot of effort into in the next few years. We want to make sure we're attracting a more diversified audience and we want to make experiences that make diverse audience welcome here in the state of Maine. Governor Mills says that Bangor Bangor's waterfront concerts have played an important role in the state's success. Darling's um, Concert Center that's bringing great shows to the, to the area. I've been up here for some concerts myself, uh, and so it's great to celebrate the role of tourism in Maine's economy. Professionals say that tourism is vital to both towns and Maine-owned businesses. Folks are coming to Maine to, to feel Maine, touch Maine, taste Maine, have it be a tangible part of their experience. And small towns really provide that. In Bangor, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Meanwhile, a local school is using data gathered by the University of Maine to learn how it can better serve all of its students. Devin Dagnalt has more. Near the end of last year, the Bangor school system partnered with the University of Maine for a study to find any weaknesses in the school's approach to education. The study looked at performance data throughout all the schools in the district and surveyed the faculty, the students, and the students' families. The survey was more of a cultural type of a survey, I would say, but while the other um, part of it was all the things that you could imagine with school data, like do you show up on time, did you take advanced courses, um, what, was there discipline, all those type of things. The information gathered showed the Bangor school system had a diverse, well-developed academic culture. We found that there, we don't seem to see a big disparity in um, race when it comes to academic achievement, which was very exciting for us. Obviously, we want to make sure that we're doing the best we can for all students, regardless of um, race, gender, ethnicity. However, according to the research, the school system has some areas it needs to work on. The data also identified a common denominator that was found among students who had lower academic achievement and higher disciplinary actions was free and reduced lunches meaning many of the students who are struggling in the school come from an impoverished background. Well, we know that, um, that students that are from an impoverished background are living in poverty, um, often struggle to achieve more. That's, that's um, something that's consistent uh, across the United States. Um, but I think what the Bangor School Department is trying to do is acknowledge that those disparities exist and to figure out how to close that gap moving forward. According to Bangor Superintendent of Schools, James Tager, the school system has already begun to implement workshops for teachers so they can change some of their approaches for students to ensure no child slips through the cracks. In Bangor, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, we'll have the latest information coming out of that horrific mass shooting at a school in Nashville. And we'll have a report on what the possible consequences of school closures and lockdowns were on students during the pandemic. We'll have those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. 
get away with a great deal at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR and 500 bonus cash with zero payments until June on eight of our most popular models. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. Maine Commercial Solar offers a variety of services, including solar system design, sales, maintenance, and installation. Maine Commercial Solar can help you with existing or new systems. We offer packages for installation by others, or we can help you build your own solar array, smaller residential, or anything in between. Maine Commercial Solar is currently hiring in Herman for multiple positions. We offer competitive pay, a 3% IRA match, vacation, holiday time, and a family-oriented environment. If interested, please call Jason at 848-7486. If you're waiting for a sign that it's time to finally tackle that window project, here it is. Renewal by Anderson's incredible window replacement days. Get all the benefits of Renewal by Anderson's exclusive and easy replacement window process. And save a lot of money while you're at it. An immediate design consultation. Exclusive fabrics, composite material windows. And precise installation by highly trained certified master installers. You get it all during Renewal by Anderson's window replacement days. Call Renewal by Anderson today and take advantage of this limited time offer in special financing. When you stay at a Verbo, you always get the whole home. Not part of it, but the whole upstairs. The whole downstairs. The whole fridge. And the whole secret nap room. Because is it really a vacation home if you have to share the house with the host? (laughs) Only with Verbo. Okay, I think we're all aware that most cell companies only give you the lowest price when you sign up for multiple lines. What? Multiple lines? Hello? Yeah, uh uh-huh, one sec. But U.S. Cellular gives you just one line for $29.99 with unlimited data. Just one line with unlimited data. So you don't have to get more lines than you need. No, you hang up. Are you even listening, guy who never looks up from his phone? Oh, not for me, I just say. Okay, so no, no, you're not listening. Get one line for $29.99, plus every plan is price protected. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Get away with a great deal at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Lease an Ionic 5 for $609 a month, including a $7,500 EV lease bonus. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. You're watching Fox 22 Bangor. Police still don't have a motive for what led to a led a 28 year old to open fire inside a private grade school in Nashville on Monday. Authorities, however, do have a clearer picture of the main suspect. Fox's Jonathan Hunt has the latest on the investigation and what the president is saying about the shooting. Three children, three children dead, all just nine years old, including the daughter of the pastor. Three members of the staff, school custodian, substitute teacher, and the head of school. President Joe Biden called it a family's worst nightmare after three children and three adults were gunned down inside a private Nashville elementary school Monday. Police say the shooter, a 28-year-old former student, meticulously planned the attack, legally purchasing seven firearms, including the two assault rifles and one handgun used in the shooting. As a nation, we owe these families more than our prayers. We owe them action. Now the president is calling on Congress to do more and to pass an assault rifle ban, a request Democrats echoed on Capitol Hill Tuesday, even as Republicans accuse them and the president of trying to politicize the shooting. To think that some people rationalize this as part of the Second Amendment is beyond me. And if you had an assault weapons ban, I wouldn't vote for it, but bring it up if you think that's the fix. As lawmakers debate, Nashville police are searching for a motive. On Tuesday afternoon, investigators revealed the shooter was under the care of a doctor to treat an undisclosed emotional disorder. The suspect reportedly hid multiple guns from their parents, who thought the shooter had sold the only weapon they knew of. But her parents felt that she uh, should not own weapons. Nashville police also say that while the shooter targeted the school, Victims were chosen at random. Jonathan Hunt, Fox News. Well, immigration protests sparked a fire leading to a major tragedy in Mexico. Fox's Alexis McAdams has more from Mission, Texas. 
It's one of the deadliest incidents at an immigration facility in Mexico's history. At least 39 migrants have died and dozens more have been injured after a large fire broke out inside of this immigration detention center on Monday night. It happened in Ciudad Juarez, just across the border from El Paso, Texas. The blaze broke out in that dormitory that had at least 68 men from Central America and Venezuela. The president of Mexico says those migrants lit their own mattresses on fire, part of a protest against their deportation. Como protesta. When they found out they would be deported as a protest at the shelter's door, they put mattresses and set fire to them. They didn't think that would cause this terrible tragedy. This tragedy happened near the busiest sector at the southern border. The migrants who died were just some of the thousands waiting to cross into the United States. And this facility is one of many in Mexico that are struggling with overcrowding. That problem is widespread in Ciudad Juarez, where just two weeks ago, a thousand migrants rushed this bridge trying to get into the United States. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill grilling Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas about this situation on Tuesday. We are uh, climbing uh, out, of a, out of a backlog because U.S. citizenship and immigration services was financially devastated in the prior administration. You should be fired, but you haven't been fired because you were carrying out the policies of the Biden administration. The El Paso sector, the busiest crossing along the southern border, with more than 1,000 migrants crossing in every single day. Reporting in Mission, Texas, I'm Alexis McAdams, Fox News. Surrounded by piles of rubble and destruction, hundreds who lost everything are trying to hold on to some hope after Friday's deadly tornado carved a massive path of destruction in Mississippi, killing at least 21 people. Fox's Jackie Ibanez takes a look at why the road to recovery will not be an easy one. Extreme pain and sadness still ringing out across large portions of western Mississippi. <laughs> recovery efforts here are expected to be long and difficult after Friday night's deadly tornado struck one of the poorest areas in the country. I didn't think I was going to make it out. The National Weather Service categorized the twister as an EF4, with wind speeds between 166 and 200 miles per hour. People were displaced from their homes and tossed and thrown and spinned and dropped. For roughly one hour, the massive tornado traveled through more than half a dozen towns, flattening people's homes right on top of them. And that's when I heard the uh, wind blowing real hard, so I had ran, I ran back over here to this bathroom right here. And I ran and hopped in that tub. Well, I've always known not to take life for granted. It could be taken, that, and it's always been proven, and it'll just got proved again. Some of the hardest hit areas like Sharkey and Humphreys counties have poverty rates of 35 and 33 percent, respectively. For comparison, the average poverty rate for the entire U.S. is less than 12 percent. Because many lack the funds and resources, socioeconomic experts say it can be even harder for poor communities to build back after this kind of devastation. There's a psychological need of being grief. There's loss. Um, someone just needs to talk. I'm here. President Biden has issued an emergency declaration for Mississippi, making federal funding available. Jackie Abanez, Fox News. Well, the newly created House Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic is looking at the consequences of mass school closures. There are persistent concerns about setbacks in student development and physical well-being, along with increases in psychological distress. Fox's Mike Emanuel reports. Our children have paid the price. A House panel investigating COVID-19 dug into the intended and unintended consequences of school closures during the pandemic. Closing of schools proved to be harmful to students, their academic, mental, physical, and social development. Congressman Wenstrup sent more than a dozen letters to several agencies and unions today, including the Centers for Disease Control and the American Federation of Teachers writing his subcommittee is, quote, concerned about the potential for undue influence of non-governmental groups on CDC scientific guidance. The witnesses were more pointed. School stayed closed primarily because the teachers unions in our country have enormous political power. The epidemiologist called to testify argued social distancing and masking were not necessary and not evidence-based. We did not obtain any new um, high quality evidence during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that masks are effective mitigation strategy. The WHO, CDC and the AMA, among others, disagree. Some Democrats cautioned against Monday morning quarterbacking. In case no one remembers, 
COVID and those days of COVID were dark, dreary, desolate. The face of the public health response defended the initial closure of schools. We're going to go back and examine that. Is were things done too long or not? But the initial decision to lock things down unequivocally saved a lot of lives. Key lawmakers say the damage is done for a generation of students and suggest policymakers must really learn lessons from COVID to avoid making the same mistakes again. In Washington, Mike Emanuel, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, we'll have the latest from Capitol Hill on the debt ceiling negotiations. And in sports, one Hudson women's basketball player put the Eagles jersey on one. Last time this weekend, we'll have the story coming up. Small town farmers search for love in the heartland. It's really hit me in the heart like this is real. Farmer Wants a Wife, Wednesday on Fox. Did you know that an alpaca item is the most wish-listed gift idea? Stop searching for that perfect gift and start shopping for it at the Blue Alpaca in Belfast. It doesn't matter who's on your gift list. The Blue Alpaca has something for everyone with an incredible selection of alpaca socks, hats, sweaters, even stuffed animals and more. Shop in-store or online and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. Too much to choose from? Don't worry. The Blue Alpaca also offers gift cards. The Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Sick. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Right now, you could save up to $1,400 with affordable 3.99% financing on a luxurious Highlander. And every Highlander comes with two years no-cost maintenance and more. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota. Let's go places. Do you struggle with occasional nerve aches in your hands or feet? Try Nervive Nerve Relief from the world's number one selling nerve care company. Nervive contains alpha lipoic acid to relieve occasional nerve aches, weakness, and discomfort. Try Nervive Nerve Relief. My secret to beating sniff chicks? Secret dry spray. Just spray and stay fresh all day. My turn. <laughs> secret actually fights odor and gets aluminum free. Hours later, still fresh. Secret works. for New England inspired New England Creamery. We make it with premium hood milk and cream, then we overload it with the good stuff. Like green mountain mint chip with a rich fudgy swirl. Main sweet blueberry with real delicious blueberries. And Cape Cod Fudge Shop, packed with fudgy truffles. Hood's New England Creamery, from Hood, for New England. Try all 13 flavors. The debt ceiling standoff between the White House and House Republicans taking another turn Tuesday night. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy wrote a letter to President Biden expressing concern about the stall in negotiations. The White House says Republicans are playing games. Fox's Kevin Cork reports. The clock is ticking on resolving a major dispute between the White House and Congress, raising the nation's debt limit. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy wrote a letter to the president on Tuesday, pressing him to negotiate. I think there's a way that we can get this done early, which would help the economy instead of the brinkmanship the president is trying to play. Republicans want to find a way to cut back on government spending and reclaim unspent COVID funds to reduce the national debt. At this point, the ball's in President Biden's court. You know, does he want to try to run out the clock and risk uh, more fiscal chaos. President Biden fired back in his own letter to the speaker, calling on Republicans to present their budget plan. Earlier in North Carolina, he called out the GOP for their tactics. Extreme MAGA Republicans are threatening to undo all this progress. They're putting our economy in jeopardy by threatening to refuse to pay America's bills. 
The U.S. actually hit its debt limit back in January. And barring a deal between congressional lawmakers and the White House, a default could occur sometime this summer. In Washington, I'm Kevin Cork, Fox News. Well, why have a number of seemingly healthy banks suddenly collapsed recently? Congress wants answers to that question from the banking regulators who are supposed to ensure collapses don't happen. Officials from the Federal Reserve, FDIC, and Treasury Department are facing tough questions from angry lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Fox's Caroline Shively reports. Things got fiery in the normally staid Senate Banking Committee on Tuesday as senators grilled the nation's top regulators over the recent collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. It looks to me like the regulators knew the problem, but nobody dropped the hammer. The warning signs should have been flashing red. Fed official Michael Barr testified that the central bank had warned SVB's managers they were at risk as early as 2021. This is a textbook case of, of bank mismanagement. Senators also questioned the FDIC's move to guarantee hundreds of billions of dollars in uninsured deposits after the two banks failed, wondering if it was a bailout for the rich. The wealthy elites do anything, anything to make a quick profit and pocket the rewards. And when their risky behavior leads to catastrophic failures, they turn to the government. But regulators told the panel the deposit guarantee was to prevent a much larger banking crisis. I think the Evidence suggested from the sequential failures of um, first Silicon Valley and then Signature that there was a significant risk of contagion to other institutions. The FDIC is undertaking a comprehensive review of the entire deposit insurance system with the results out by May 1st. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. And earlier we were talking about just how great the start of the week has been mm -hmm. weather-wise. Yeah. And uh, we know, though, that things could shake up in the coming days. Yeah, we're hoping to see m the majority, though, of pleasant weather coming our way. And we'll get those answers in the full five day just ahead. High temperatures mostly in the 40s out there today, so a bit colder than yesterday. But sunshine returns tomorrow with slightly warmer temperatures and then some rain and snow. Those details for you when I come back. Paramount Paving, Maine's go-to for all your paving and seal coating. Paramount Paving offers commercial and residential paving and seal coating services throughout eastern and central Maine. Give us a call for a free estimate today. Paramount Paving, when it comes to paving, we are Paramount. Make a move in the most electrifying Honda vehicles yet. Like the CRV and Accord, with available hybrid powertrains designed for more responsive performance and more advanced tech. When you drive a Honda, you're driving with the 2022 Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com Best Value brand. Get moving and find a Honda for you. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or visit your local Honda dealer today. Take your taste buds on a journey and experience the brand new international menu Tuesday through Thursday only at the Lucerne Inn and Ryan's Pub. Every Tuesday, enjoy their delicious French cuisine. On Wednesdays, enjoy their memorable Italian delicacies. And every Thursday, be ready for a fiesta with their Mexican favorites. A full five-course dinner for just $29.95 per person. And don't forget about their all-you-can-eat seafood Fridays. The Lucerne Inn, beautiful dining with a delicious view. What's the hardest thing about hitting a cycle? The triple. And what park is one of the easiest to hit a triple in? I think it's the Fenway. Did you know that Fenway is one of the best parks to hit a cycle in? Do you think you could hit for the cycle? I can do it. If any Red Sox player hits for the cycle starting July 31st, you'll get it all free. And you get up to 60 months no interest, but you have to buy now. It could happen. Paramount Paving, Maine's go-to for all your paving and seal coating. Paramount Paving offers commercial and residential paving and seal coating services throughout eastern and central Maine. Give us a call for a free estimate today. Paramount Paving, when it comes to paving, we are Paramount. I am devastated. Don't miss the shocking elimination. Oh my gosh. All new Next Level Chef, Thursday on Fox.
Here we go. Your full weather is brought by the Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store. Visit our ranch and meet the alpacas or shop in our store in downtown Belfast. And all right, let's talk about this. Here we go out there today. Uh, lots of virga in the atmosphere. Precipitation up there, but not quite reaching the ground. There are a few sprinkles and a couple of flurries out there. This is not a big deal at all. It'll be out of here tonight and tomorrow is going to be a very nice day. But we are in a very active weather pattern right now. Lots of moisture to our south. Lots of waves of energy kind of work their way across the U.S. and those will each of them will clip us basically every couple days around here. So our next chance for rain and some snow getting in here on Thursday. And then this one gets in here over the weekend. This one could really bring a good soaking rainfall to the area uh, on Saturday into Sunday. Okay, let's walk you through it tonight. The light sprinkles out there now. We'll get out of here very quickly. Here's 11 o'clock tomorrow morning looking at lots of clear skies across the area. Don't forget your sunglasses tomorrow. But then increasing clouds tomorrow evening. Here's 11 o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow night, snow and some freezing drizzle back off to the west of us. That will overspread the area on Thursday. Move through rather quickly, though, with a quick burst of some snow and also some drizzle and light rain showers. That gets out of here. And then the atmosphere kind of recharges here, giving us a nice day on Thursday before our next weather system gets in here over the weekend and beyond. And this one could bring us a soaking rainfall after initially a little bit of light snow on Friday evening. We'll change over to all rain on Saturday. And that rain could be locally heavy Saturday into Sunday. A uh, wet weekend is on the way for us, especially on Saturday. If it's all going to be rain, it looks something like this. We're talking a widespread soaking rainfall on the way. And most of this will be rain for our area. But there will be some snow. That snow looks like this through about Thursday. There could be an inch or two of snow north and west of the Bangor area. With this first round that comes through on Thursday, there's probably some more snow back in the forecast for us later on Saturday. Uh, but that'll be mostly rain mixing with snow, changing over to all rain on Saturday. And the snowpack here looking pretty good still, down to zero here in Bangor. But just to our north and west, of course, there's feet of snow on the ground here. And we don't want to melt this too quickly. And with a soaking rainfall on the way for us this weekend, we could do that, which could uh, rise some flooding concerns across our area. And we are melting lots of snow, of course, uh, here in Bangor today, 46, 43 for Bar Harbor. So uh, temperatures above average today or near average today. And we'll be a slightly warmer across our area tomorrow as we'll get a little bit of surge or warmer air coming our way. Uh, it's not going to stick around, though, forever, Rock here, as you know. Our forecast then for tonight, though, is lots of clouds out there. And partly cloudy skies later on. There could be a sprinkle or a flurry with low temperatures down near 27 for tomorrow. All right, lots of sunshine. I went with 49, but that sun's going to feel really good tomorrow, that late March sunshine. Uh, a couple of you could do 50 with a northwest breeze around 5. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows a very nice day tomorrow. There's that rain-snow mix on Thursday. Again, a couple inches of snow north and west of the Bangor area. Friday, we're quiet, followed by a more rain-snow mix on Saturday. Beth? Alrighty, so some raininess heading our way, but hopefully short-lived. Yep, and at yeah. least one more really nice day before we get there. We will take it. Mm -hmm. All right, well, sports is coming up next. Stay with us. Building new or replacing an aging deck? Take a look at high-performance Trex composite decking and railing from Hammond Lumber Company. Trex outperforms wood and is available in colors and configurations to fit every taste and price point. Your Hammond sales rep will help you with your design and product choices and can connect you with local builders. And Hammond delivers from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Make the most of outdoor living with Trex composite decking and railing from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. 
This is Ford Truck Month, America. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight, including Ford F-150 and the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger. So get into Ford Truck Month and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you, where there's a great selection in stock. Now, make no payments for 90 days and get 3.9% financing for 60 months plus $1,000 cash on select F-150 models. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Ansley Moore, a realtor since 2013, working throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Welcome back in everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start things off on the track where the Bangor girls track and field squad has been an absolute wagon these past few years. They have won three straight indoor titles and now they are gearing up for the outdoor season where they have the chance to do the same. With no state finals meets in 2020, some of these seniors have won every single year they've been at Bangor. And they say a big reason for that success on the surface is pretty simple. Uh, practice, practice, practice. Uh, you got to show up, you got to lift, you got to do what coach tells you. And obviously the coaches is a huge part. They make a plan for us at the beginning of the season and we just need to follow through and do what we got to do. It's a lot of dedication. Obviously we have some really great coaches this year, especially in the throwers. Um, so I think just listening to them and being positive, keeping that positive attitude um, and staying consistent with practicing uh, is definitely what is going to and what has helped us in the past. While track is considered an individual sport, Bangor as a team has had a historically successful run these past few years. And it's that chemistry and team bond that has also contributed to why they are so good. We're very supportive of one another. Uh, like the throwers are always interacting with the sprinters and the sprinters are always with the jumpers. And you know, every, everybody's friends on the team. Um, so all of my best friends are on this team. And it's really just that, that mentality that we're all in this together. Yeah, it's the atmosphere. Everybody wants to work for each other and it just, it's great. Them luck first meet April 13th. Let's move on to some basketball now. Over the weekend, Husson graduate senior Vanessa Duart threw the green and gold on one last time, capping off an incredible five-year career with the Eagles. Ryan Sudall has that story. It really meant a lot just to know that my five years of hard work had paid off and that it had been recognized by others. On Sunday, Husson fifth-year guard Vanessa Duart played in the New England Women's Basketball Association's Senior All-Star Game at Smith College in Massachusetts. I know that it had to be voted on by coaches and that there was a large selection of really great players. It's not the easiest All-Star Game to you know, be selected because there's so many seniors in New England. The fact that she was selected was fantastic. A 1,000-point scorer, Duart was a staple for the Eagles, becoming a captain her junior year a title she earned through her never-ending dedication to bettering herself and the team. She raised the bar in terms of training, playing hard and not ever resting. It didn't matter if it's practice or that game, she, she came with that same level of energy every single day. But no matter how hard she worked, Duart knows she wouldn't be the multiple-time All-NAC honoree she is if it wasn't for those around her. I played with a lot of great teammates who have made me look good and who I've hopefully made an impact on them as well. And just my coaches believing in me and helping me grow into the player that I am today, that meant a lot throughout the five years. Now that Duart's playing career has come to a close, Coach Walker says she'll be hard to replace and that her leadership will be greatly missed. I think when she's gone, the kids are going to realize even more so what a great leader she was. She was just really engaged with with the game and the program and where we wanted to go and to do that with her teammates, wanting to bring her teammates forward and make them better. And looking back, Duart wouldn't change a single thing about her time in the green and gold. I don't think I regret anything or any of the games that I've played. I think that is something really great to say. In Bangor, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. All right, thank you for that, Ryan. Let's move on now. Staying with basketball, the Maine Celtics will begin their run towards a G League title Wednesday afternoon at the Expo when the Seas battle Cleveland. It's a 2 o'clock tip-off. The Celtics will be a little short-handed. Earlier on Tuesday, the Utah Jazz signed power forward Luka Shamanich 
to a 10-day contract. Luka is the team's leading scorer, averaging 21 points and 9 rebounds a game. He was just named the G League Player of the Month. So the Celtics, who went 2-0 against the Cleveland Charge during the regular season, will be without Luka for the remainder of the playoffs. The winner will move on to play top-seeded Long Island on Friday. Celtics two-way player J.D. Davidson is excited for the opportunity ahead. As a team, we just came together. We played good all year. We went down, but we came back as a team. I think we found out really right at the right time to get to get put in the playoffs. I thought our guys fought through a lot of adversity. Um, and in the end, all we talked about is just find a way to make the playoffs, right? The same way at the beginning part of the year, we found a way to make the Showcase Cup. Snuck in as the 8th seed, right? Just find a way to make the playoffs, and then anything can happen. Danny Ainge grabbing one of the main Celtics players. Let's go to the ice now. Bruins with the chance to clinch the President's Cup on Tuesday night with nine games left in the season. President's Cup goes to the team with the best regular season record. So let's start it off. Former Black Bear Jimmy Montgomery looking to lead his squad to a victory over the Nashville Predators. Second period, no score. Preds working it around. This one is going to find Cody Glass in the center. He fires and breaks it open. One to nothing, Nashville. Third period we go. Same score. Bruins with it in the zone. Pasternak inside to Bergeron, but he can't squeeze it in there. Still one to nothing. Time winding down now. Olmark pulled for the bees, and Jeremy Lausen fires it the length of the ice. That finds the center of the net. Makes it two to nothing. Preds. Bruins would avoid the shutout though. Pasternak able to get this one to go from Jake DeBrusque and Charlie McAvoy. That makes it two to one. But with just 0.3 seconds on the clock, that would be the final. Bees fall two to one to Nashville. And that is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Paramount Paving, Maine's go-to for all your paving and seal coating. Paramount Paving offers commercial and residential paving and seal coating services throughout eastern and central Maine. Give us a call for a free estimate today. Paramount Paving, when it comes to paving, we are Paramount. If you're waiting for a sign that it's time to finally tackle that window project, here it is. Renewal by Anderson's incredible window replacement days. Get all the benefits of Renewal by Anderson's exclusive and easy replacement window process. And save a lot of money while you're at it. An immediate design consultation, exclusive fabrics, composite material windows, and precise installation by highly trained certified master installers. You get it all during Renewal by Anderson's window replacement days. Call Renewal by Anderson today and take advantage of this limited time offer in special financing. It's time to bring balance to business travel and discover the equilibrium that works for you. At National, you're in control. Skip the counter, choose any car in the aisle, and manage your rental right from the app. So you can mix work with leisure or leisure with work, giving you the control to find the perfect balance. Go National. Go like a pro. So cozy. How many rooms are in there? Should we go check it out? Yeah. You get to stay here all weekend. When you stay at a Verbo, I call doing the door code. The host doesn't stay with you. It looks exactly like the picture. Because without privacy in your vacation home, it's a full log cabin, guys. It isn't really it's a vacation. Up by the fire. Is it? Oh, oh my God. Rafi, do you know what a cycle is? Single, double, triple, home, one player, one game. Right. If any Sox player hits for the cycle starting July 31st, you'll get it all free. Free? But you have to buy now. Saturdays, baseball's best are showing out on Fox. The biggest games on the best day of the week. Fox Saturday Baseball returns April 1st. Paramount Paving, Maine's go-to for all your paving and seal coating. Paramount Paving offers commercial and residential paving and seal coating services throughout eastern and central Maine. Give us a call for a free estimate today. Paramount Paving, when it comes to paving, we are Paramount. For the final time, Cody Rhodes goes face-to-face -face with the undisputed champion Roman Reigns. An all-new Friday Night Smackdown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox.
A popular HBO show sets a new record. An iconic animated duo return for another adventure and more. Here's Fox's Ashley Devorkin with all of the latest from the Hollywood Nation. The White Lotus books a new destination and the Roys draw a massive audience in the Hollywood Nation. Excited to get into this knife fight. The Roy family's final run is off to a good start. The fourth and final season of HBO's Emmy-winning series Succession premiered this past Sunday and scored the highest viewership in the show's history. 2.3 million tuned in to watch. It surpasses the previous record set by the third season finale of 1.7 million in December 2021. The numbers are based on Nielsen and first-party streaming data from HBO. Whenever I stay at a White Lotus, I always have a memorable time. HBO's The White Lotus is heading to Asia. According to Variety, Thailand will be the new location for season three of the hit anthology series. The show's first season was set in Hawaii and was followed by Italy for season two. Now let the games begin. Two animated icons return in today's first looks. Paramount Plus released the trailer to season two of Mike Judge's Beavis and Butthead, featuring the popular teen slackers taking on parenthood, various jobs, traveling through space, and more. The show returns April 20th. Happy, we're going to be late to the royal wedding. And Anna Kendrick and Justin Timberlake are back for more singing and dancing as their pint-sized alter egos in Trolls Band Together. The threequel follows their characters Queen Poppy and Branch, embarking on an emotional journey that will reconnect Branch with his long-lost brothers and restart their boy band. The film arrives in theaters November 17th. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Researchers could be on the verge of a breakthrough in the battle against cancer. A new treatment being dubbed the, quote, holy grail of early detection is said to possibly be able to predict tumors more than a year before they even start to form. The pan-cancer blood test, the world's first, was said to be first developed by Indian firm Epigenerous Biotech in 2021. A trial can a constituting rather of 500 cancer and 500 non-cancer patients showed that researchers were able to accurately anticipate the formation of tumors across 25 types of cancer, including breast, pancreatic, lung, and colorectal cancers before they even formed. Some in the non-cancer group were even found to be predisposed for future cancer diagnoses. The new test can see cancers in stages one and two, but can detect the disease up to 18 months ahead of first stage diagnoses. It can also help those who've already been diagnosed as it can tell exactly which organ or organs the would-be tumor will strike and well before it has amassed. Well, switching gears now and finally tonight, a World War II veteran celebrates his 98th birthday by skydiving. Vince Speranza was a paratrooper with the 101st Airborne Division during World War II. And this past Saturday, Vince put on a chute again and did a tandem skydive. The plane he jumped from, the Tico Bell, was used in the invasion of Normandy on D-Day. Speranza made training jumps in the final days of, whoa, there he goes. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he made training jumps in the final days of the war in preparation for a possible air attack in the Pacific before Japan surrendered. He saw combat as a machine gunner during the Battle of the Bulge as well. I would not have the guts for that straight up. <laughs> Very brave man there. For Good sure. night. Good night, everyone. For more local news coverage, switch over to our sister station, ABC7, right now for ABC7 News at 11. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always. Praises and bring you back.